I just took a set of 25 sweeps in a soybean field. That's the start. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about sampling in soybean and taking a good sample, representative sample across your soybean fields to make sure that you can monitor for important insect pests that occur in soybean. It starts with having some tools. One of the tools we're going to concentrate on today is the sweep net. This is a standard sweep net. It's 15 inches in diameter. Normally when you're using a sweep net, we recommend that you take four sets of 25 sweeps in each soybean field. So I just took one set of 25 sweeps in this soybean field. Talk a little bit, a bit just about how you use the sweep net, the actual practice of it. One sweep through the canopy just consists of taking that sweep net through the canopy so that the top of the sweep net is just above the level of the canopy. It's a pretty vigorous sweep. If you noticed as I was going through the net, I was picking through leaves. You need to be catching leaves. Usually that sweep's going to be about 120 to 160 degree arc through the canopy like this. You want that net to be flat or actually tilted a little bit upward as it goes through the canopy. You're going to take a big step between each sweep. So if you're taking 25 sweeps, you do one, take a step two. You don't want to stack them right on top of each other because you're disturbing that canopy as you sweep and you want to be sweeping undisturbed canopy. When you get done with that, that set of 25 sweeps, first thing I usually do is just take a quick peek into the net. It kind of gives you a real brief, uh, quick idea rather, about what might be in there that's worth counting. And you'll notice then I kept the net kind of pinched between my hand until I was ready and then I started just slowly opening up the net, going through the foliage and picking through the leaf material and counting what I thought needed to be counted. So really, we started kind of at the end. I want to go back to the beginning and, and talk about the foundation you need to be able to do this. The first thing you need to do when you're sampling a soybean field is to have a schedule. The most important component of a sampling program is actually getting out and putting footprints into the field. You need to do this at least every seven to ten days. Sometimes that's dictated by what you're finding in the field the previous sample. If you're close to threshold, you might need to make uh, a trip in as little as five days. If you, if you sample and there's virtually no pest activity at all, you might be able to stretch it out to ten days. But normally we would say sample about every week. The other thing that you want to do is really concentrate your effort in critical windows. The most important time to do sampling in any soybean field is shortly after emergence for the first two or three weeks when that plant's susceptible to insect pests, but it's also susceptible to other things, stand, disease loss. So keep in mind as you're sampling this field with a sweep net, you're also observing other things. Another really critical st stage for insect monitoring in soybeans after the seedling stage is once that plant begins to flower. And really any time between R2, early pod development, and R6, which is uh, later pod development are critical windows. The other thing I like to encourage people to do is go out with a plan. There's certain windows, certain times of year where you're going to look for specific kinds of insects. So usually I'll go out in the field and I say I'm going to look for stink bugs. When I'm doing that, I'm running my sweep net, I'm also going to notice other pests that are in that field. One of the real challenges for a novice person learning to scout soybeans is learning to identify the different insects. There's a lot of insects in that net that you need to be concerned about. So one of the first things you need to do is become familiar with the kinds of insects, get some training. There's also a lot of online resources. And you also need to get familiar with what the basic treatment thresholds are in a field. For example, in stink bugs, we recommend treatment anytime between R1 and R6 when you average 36 stink bugs in 100 sweeps. So if you have that number in mind as you're going through the field, you're going to be cognizant and aware of, wow, gee, I found one stink bug in this set of 25 sweeps. That's nowhere near threshold. Or maybe you found 30 in a set of 25 sweeps, and that would certainly pique your interest. Sampling soybeans is not just about using a sweep net and walking through the field. There's some other things you need to be observing while you're sampling soybeans. And it's not just about insect control. So one of the key components, again, is get on a regular schedule and as you're walking through those fields, pay attention to detail. Again, many of the insects that you're going to be targeting in your, in, with your sweep net is going to vary depending on the developmental stage of the crop. If I pull a plant right out of here and pull one of these plants out of the ground, you're going to notice that these plants are beginning to bloom. And in fact, there's very small pods on them. So this plant is actually approaching R2, early pod development. With that in mind, I'm going to switch and really start concentrating on a few key pests. One key pest anytime between R1 and R6 is the stink bug. 
Another insect I'd be very concerned about at this developmental stage might be corn earworms, also called, called pod worms. So again, we need to be aware as we're walking through the field about what our likely pests are going to be in the field and what's likely to cause economic damage. Stink bugs may be in the field prior to flowering, but usually not at very high levels. And honestly, they can do very little damage because there's no pods on that plant to feed on. So what I've done is I've taken a set of 25 sweeps and I'm actually picking through the foliage in this net. I've taken a quick peek in there just to see if I saw anything obvious. Uh, I've already known from our previous sweeps that we do have a few stink bugs in here. Again, you're going to see some insects fly off that aren't necessarily important. So one of the things you need to learn is to how to quickly identify insects. And again, that may take a little training and it certainly takes a little practice. That was a green stink bug that just flew off. And again, I'm picking through this foliage because these insects sometimes will cling to the foliage and they won't fly off real readily. So if you don't pick through it, you may actually miss some insects. Again, I'm just being careful. There's a green clover worm larvae in my hand. You can actually identify them by the numbers of pro legs, also by their behavior a little bit. If you start messing with these things, they'll flop around in defense. And that's very characteristic of a green clover worm. Very few, the threshold on green clover worms is pretty high. Another thing we're starting to run into a lot in our sweep nets this time of year are Japanese beetles. And you'll notice there's some defoliation out here from Japanese beetles. They will feed on the foliage of soybean. As I'm walking through the field, I'm observing defoliation. Actually, their defoliation is pretty characteristic. You can learn to identify it pretty quickly just as you're walking. If you're catching stink bugs, one of the things you might notice is their smell. Uh, some people find it a little repellent, but it is noticeable. In this net, I only caught one green stink bug adult. Now you'll notice at the bottom of the net, you need to pay attention to what's going on in the bottom of the net. There's actually several caterpillars. One, two, three, four, five. These are actually all green clover worms. That's not a real large number, but it's something that you would be potentially looking for. If they were occurring in large numbers, you certainly uh, would be taking notes and, and making sure you're keeping up with your counts. So again, one of the challenges is seeing the forest through the trees. Very often you're looking at maybe 10 or 12 pests that can be pretty significant. More than likely there's just going to be one or two pests in that field that are, are going to be of concern. And again, one of the things I recommend is you go out there with a plan. You target certain pests or pest complexes. This time of year I'd be looking primarily for stink bugs. These are early beans, early flowering. I'd also be looking for corn earworm because they're going to be attracted to beans at this stage. As we get later in the season, I'm going to be more concerned about late season defoliating caterpillars, in particular things like uh, soybean looper, maybe fall armyworm.